To me, the basic reform that we need in the Catholic Church is governmental reform. Uh, and I, I'm part of a, a group of progressive Catholic groups called CORE, or stands for Catholic Organizations for Renewal. The renewal that we need in the Catholic Church is uh, basically one of government. Um, we are, we have a form of government essentially that's a totalitarian form of government. And uh, it, that's, that's why it is so difficult uh, for change to happen. And so if I, if I um, had just one reform that, I, I, to me, that is the key. Um, and if um, I, I could uh, explain a little bit about that totalitarian state, I think, that we are, we are under. We saw that develop so much in church history after uh, the 19th century with the, with the reign of Pi, Pope Pius the, the IX. Before uh, Pius the IX, um, uh, of course, we, ha we, had, we had other popes, and the pope, uh, always had uh, respect and uh, a place of um, honor, um, but there were there was difference. Uh, there there were differences, and the differences were voiced. I mean, the political situation, uh, the ecclesiastical political situation, was very different. But with Pius IX, we see a. Uh, a tightening up, a centralization, uh, almost what I call popolatry, uh, and the the, the uh, unfortunate um, outcome of a, the First Vatican Council, which which resulted in a, a declaration of, that the Pope is infallible. Uh, really, no person is infallible. No institution is infallible. If we don't acknowledge that we can make mistakes, uh, I mean, uh, to me, that's very arrogant. Uh, so we re we need a whole reform, not only of the papacy, of the of, of the uh, curia, the Vatican offices. We really need a whole reform of how we govern the church. In the early church, um, it was called the churches. We had the Church of Jerusalem, the Church of Antioch, the, the Church of Rome, the Church of Alexandria, because these were Christian communities in these places, and they came together. They, 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 uh, they had differences. They voiced their differences. No one claimed to be over anyone else. Always the pope, uh, uh, well, the, and even the word pope, um, in the early church, uh, bishops were called popes, all bishops. I mean, it was a sign of affection, papa. Um, but the Bishop of Rome had a special um, reverence because it was uh, thought uh, of that Peter and Paul um, uh, died in Rome, and that was kind of a, a special uh, place. But uh, the Bishop of Rome wasn't um, telling the bishops of other uh, churches in Alexandria or Jerusalem or Antioch, uh, you know, what they should do. It, it was uh, collegial, and that's what, that's what this, the Second Vatican Council called us back to, a collegial form of church. Unfortun well, fortunately, it be the, the Second Vatican Council uh, in the 60s and the 70s was... Um, uh, being effective, but with the uh, papacy of Pope John Paul II and now uh, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth, um, uh, there's been a regression to to uh, to the times before the Second Vatican Council, trying to get back to the 19th century of Pius the Ninth, and um, so to me the linchpin of of uh, of reform in the Catholic Church is to reform the governmental structure.